Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into Talking Shop in partnership with the Coffee Breakers. Today, we're at Burgandy Coins and Collectibles here in New York. We're going to be taking a look through everything and talking to the owners. So, it's been a year since we did our last episode here. Welcome back. A lot has changed. I bought a Lincoln from you. Right. Um, and you have so much insane new stuff in the shop. But I want to know, you know, when we recorded our last episode, cards were hot but not super hot. Right. Uh, some stuff, you know, has gone up an insane amount. What, what is, you know, a shop owner are you looking for now? Um, so yeah, the cards, absolutely. They absolutely exploded um, in the last year. And they were hot, you're right, before uh, the pandemic uh, happened, but during the pandemic, and not just cards, everything's exploded from paper currency, coins, artwork. Um, now we have NFTs to look out for. So anything, that's collectible is seeing like unprecedented values and the, the amount of collectors out there now for this stuff is uh, way more than it's ever done uh, from just a year ago. Yeah, it's it's really insane. Now, how do you see some of this random oddball stuff picking up? Obviously, cards picked up the most, but are people from cards now going into currency and going into presidential stuff and going into celebrity signatures? Are you right. seeing any of that? you know, crossover? Uh, you're seeing a ton of it just because there's so many more people in it now. And sports cards, traditionally in our hobby, has always been the backbone. It's really the first thing people collect. Um, and then once they start collecting, and they, get into, they start going to stores or online and auctions, and then they can see all the other options that are out there. Well, since we're here, I know you've got a bunch of items we're gonna show off, so let's do that. Yeah, let's hit it. Um, we got some great stuff from, you know, sports cards to autographs and everything in between. Cool. Obviously, we have some big cards here. You want to walk me right. through uh, this one that I'm holding here? Okay, so <laughs> this is, it might not be the most famous Mickey Mouse card, but this is the true rookie. Yeah. So he has two rookie cards, but technically the 1951 Bowman, this is real rookie card. Uh, the 52 tops, this one, this is what everybody knows. This is the face of the hobby. Right. But this one, in my opinion, is this is the true rookie. Um, if you're a real card collector, I mean, you have to have both, but this one you have to have just because it's the, and it's underappreciated and it's actually more affordable for that reason too. But I love this card. So how much is a PSA for 51 Bowman Mantle? So we're going to talk about prices today versus about a year ago. So right. about a year ago, you probably could have picked it up for about 10, 15,000, maybe 20,000, but it's about double. So it's about 30, 40 grand today. Wow. And what about this? Um, so yeah, so that one is even more ridiculous. So pre-pandemic, it was probably about a $30,000 card, a three. Um, and now it's about 75, 85,000. That's so ridiculous. And right. obviously our, our friend Rob, he bought uh, the nine for upwards of five million. Yeah, 5.2 for 1952. <laughs> and a 10 now is worth, they're only three. Right. But it's worth at least twenty-five plus million dollars. Right. Yeah. You can if just somebody were willing if to they sell. wanted to sell it, and it could be more. It's just at that point, it's a number. You there know, have been get... offers for thirty million. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. So we've got a couple of signed guitars here. Walk us through quick what, what we're looking at. Okay. So right here, the Beatles, both of them. We have Paul McCartney. And then we have a George Harrison. A George Harrison uh, signed guitar is big, big time because they just don't really exist. Um, and the guitars they're signed on, um, this is an original Rickenbacker from the early 70s. So if it was from the mid 60s, it would probably be one of a kind because, you know, the Beatles hype. Um, but still, it's a vintage Rickenbacker. It's insanely rare. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure it's probably one of one. I did some more research, but at most there's a handful. So what's the asking price on it? We're still determining that, but um, 35K is not crazy. We'll put it that wow. way. Yeah. Now what about the Paul McCartney? So Paul McCartney, obviously he's still living. He signs a bunch, um, but he doesn't like to sign and his signature today is very short. So we have a longer version. It's still not his Beatles day, but it's still a really great piece. Um, and it's signed here, um, you know, on the pick guard. And this is a, um, what guitar is this again? Hoffner bass. Sorry, Hoffner bass guitar. This is Very his Hoffner. Cool. Yeah. So something like this is in the ballpark of 10 to 12,000. 
still very not valuable. Not them, especially yeah. for somebody who's still around. And, still around, exactly. Yeah. Right. Now, is this signed? So this, this here, yeah, this is, um, so what they call them, signed sheets um, or album pages. This one's pretty cool. So it's actually a landing card and it's from Ireland, Dublin, Ireland. And <clears throat> we can date it to 1963. The Beatles did a tour. It was right before they came to the United States with the, you know, it's pre-British invasion. And uh, they went to Ireland. They did the only two shows they ever did there. And that was signed for someone at British European Airways who just had happened to pull it out. Right. Someone probably getting on or off the plane at the time and just had it signed. Also, when you're collecting the Beatles, you want them from their height, right? It's like a ball player. Do you want a Babe Ruth autograph from 1927? Or do you want something when he was on his deathbed in the late 40s? Right? Obviously, you want when they're at their height. So this is 63. This is shoot, like, this is, you know, Beatlemania. This isn't signed in the 70s or 80s. Or Very cool. Yeah. As you know, I'm, an, I'm a signature guy. I know you've got one though. Yes, so the signatures is what everybody, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, uh, the big thing. Because so, everybody can understand it immediately. Right, exactly, a signature is a signature, right? Yeah, so let's see here. So this is cool. Um, first of all, Lincoln has a couple types of signatures. He's got the full name Abraham Lincoln, and that's only seen on official government documents for the most part. Um, Otherwise, you'll see a Lincoln when he writes notes and stuff. And then you have this version, which is pre-presidency. He was a lawyer mm -hmm. and he wrote a lot of legal briefs. And this is cool because it's not only all handwritten by him and double-sided, but he signed it five times uh, with his law partner at the time. So this is from the 1850s. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pick it up. I'll lift it up here a little bit. Take it out of here. Documents like this just need to be super careful with. They're super fragile. The paper's, you know, very brittle. Um, but you know, this stuff is, just, this is what really excites me, you know? I'm with you. <laughs> I'm just standing still here so the wind yeah. doesn't affect it. Um, and then what's cool is it's actually double-sided, so I'll flip it over here. Wow. And then it's, you have two more signatures on this so side. So why did he sign it five times? Or so he's five kept, separate? Right, exactly. So he keeps responding to, um, you know, writing more legal briefs, responding to the other, the, the other side. Um, and it was all, you know, kept in. Uh, is it all in his hand? All in his hand, which wow. is crazy. Yeah, because going back to the commercialization of the hobby, people take old documents like this and they cut out words, letters, and they sell them on eBay. Um, so that's one of my favorite new items we just got in. So I asked if we could see some coins and things like that. What do you have? So <clears throat> we do a, a lot of uh, rare coins. We do a lot of just uh, bullion coins, meaning strictly gold or silver value um, for battle investing. But these are some collectible coins here. So these are really popular. These are early uh, US gold coins. So these were meant for circulation. You would buy, you know, you could buy a home with gold coins back in the day. Um, that was the point of uh, the gold coins. Obviously we got off the gold standard. Um, but these are just some high-grade early coins from the early 1900s, late 1800s. Which is the most valuable out of all of these? The bigger ones, I imagine? Uh, yeah, so obviously they have more gold content, but that's not always the case. For example, this... So the, the large ones are called $20 gold pieces. This was worth $20 in the early 1900s. <laughs> this little tiny one was worth a dollar. Um, however, this little uh, this little one here is about five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. Um, right, that little piece of gold. So the gold you're not buying for the gold value. The gold value in there is maybe a couple hundred bucks max. I think I think that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for taking us all through once again. And yeah, you're welcome we'll, anytime. Yeah, we'll keep this an annual thing. Exactly. We always have new stuff, so come on back anytime. Amazing. Well, for everybody else, subscribe, like, come to the shop if you're in New York, and we'll see you next time.